We'll begin our reading verse number 3, the 24th Psalm, verse number 3. The Bible says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the testimonies. And God, we certainly do pray for Brian. You'd continue to help him as he recovers from the heart attacks. Continue to be with Miss Dawn and continue to be with Miss Natalie. We do pray for Nick. Lord, we do miss him. And Lord, I pray for that young man that wherever he's at tonight, you get a hold of his heart. And God, you do work in his heart. Lord, we know that the Holy Spirit can go places we can't go and do things we can't even think about. So I do pray that, Lord, you'd work in his heart. I pray for those that were in our service this morning who were religious but lost. I pray that the seed of the Word of God be planted in their heart and, Lord, begin to take root. And maybe, Lord, you send somebody by their way to water it. And God, I pray you'd give the increase and we'd see fruit from that by folks being saved by the good grace of God. Now, Father, we thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the house of God, the people of God. God, thank you for Calvary and what you've done for us. Thank you for uh, your faithfulness and your long suffering. And God, thank you for the good grace of God. Now, for the next few minutes, use this unworthy vessel. And Father, I pray that, Lord, you would edify your people I do pray for Holy Ghost conviction, and I do pray that folks uh, would certainly do business with God. Now, Father, have your will and way, and Father, will not fail to bless you and praise you for it, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. In these verses, we find that uh, the psalmist is asking a question, who will ascend? Uh, uh, unto the hill the, of the Lord, and he's talking about uh, Jerusalem, which sat up on the hill, and uh, uh, he's talking about the sanctuary in Jerusalem, and who can really stand before the Lord. Uh, and we find, uh, as it uh, um, deals with us as believers today, we can find some things about this text uh, uh, that should uh, absolutely uh, cause us to ask the same question. We notice the aspirations of the believer in verse number three. Uh, the aspiration ought to be that we ought to desire where the Lord is. Uh, we ought to desire to ascend to him and be in his presence uh, 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 all the time. Now listen, we're never out of his presence, but uh, I sure do like it when we get so close to him uh, that he manifests himself in special ways uh, that doesn't always happen. So we see the aspirations of the believer in verse four. We see the actions of the believer. Who's the one that's going to aspire to be where God is? Well, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart and hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. Uh, in other words, somebody that's living a clean life, somebody that's walking with the Lord, uh, somebody that's uh, 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 basing their life upon the precepts of the Scriptures, uh, somebody that wants to please the Father. So we see the actions of the believer, and then we see the attaining of the believer. Uh, Look what happens when you get to where God is, and look what happens when you live right. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, verse 5, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Everybody wants to be blessed, but people don't always want to do what it takes to be blessed. Now, let me qualify that. The only condition, Miss Crystal, that God will ever bless you is the fact that he loves you. You can't earn his blessings, but the Lord just tends to... Put a little handfuls on purpose, Brother Brian, for them that are striving to please him. Hmm? And I really, I'm interested there, verse 3, when it says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And that's what I'm going to preach on tonight. I want to preach on who shall ascend. Now, can I say this is a question that is inclusive. Everybody can ascend. Everybody has the opportunity of sin, uh, to ascend. Everybody that uh, uh, desires the Lord can certainly get to where he's at. It's an inclusive question. But can I say that even though it's inclusive, uh, 
not everybody's going to really embrace it. Mm -mm. It's an inclusive question. It's a question with an invitation. Who shall ascend to the Lord? The Lord bids us to draw nigh to God. God will draw nigh to us. God is always inviting us to uh, uh, seek after Him and to long for Him and to put Him first in our life. Uh, but Brother Phil, uh, not everybody does. Can I say that on any given day, uh, every one of us falls short of His glory and we don't seek Him like we should? It's also an individualized question. Can I say that who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord corporately? We could say, well, the Emmanuel Baptist Church, we want to do the Lord's will, but it comes down to an individual basis. Just like revival. Corporately, God can revive His church, but revival comes to individuals. And when enough of His... Of his uh, uh, the body of Christ begins to get revived, then the whole church gets revived. But it's an individual thing. Miss Kathy, you can't live for God through me, and I can't live for God through you. It's an individual thing. And can I say this question is also seldom initialized. We'll break our necks for certain things in this life, but it seems like the things of God are pushed to the back burner. Hmm? Amen. Used to when there's Kmart, people would break their necks for them blue light specials. I'm not kidding you, man. I was down in Kmart one time, and I thought, my life is in jeopardy. <laughs> These women trying to get to that blue flashing light, they're crazy. I've always tried to run away from blue lights, if you know what I mean. Huh? That's a true story. One time, it was during, uh, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, March, uh, you know, whatever that Friday madness is, midnight madness, we was down at Pigeon Forge. And that says, let's go to Walmart. That is not a place to be at midnight madness in Walmart. And they had these big tubs all covered up with bags you couldn't see. What, and at a certain time, this is going on special, and she had me in the electronics area because, area, you know, the boys like playing video games. She said, whatever games are on sale, get them. So I'm standing there, standing there, standing there, standing there, and all of a sudden it was about time to take them bags off. I'm here to tell you I feared for my life. I really wanted to pull my nine out and, put, and you know, pop off a couple rounds just so I could get out of there, but I didn't want to spend the rest of the holiday in jail. But I'm telling you, people are crazy over temporary things. Can I say it's filtered into our churches? You know? Little Johnny hits a ball, we go berserk. Preacher preaches what Jesus did on Calvary, we sit there bored to death. Hmm? The boss man tells you you got to work overtime and you're glad to get it. Preacher asks you to pray a little extra and you act like, man, what is this guy? Is he crazy? See, it's seldom initialized. That word ascend means to rise, to elevate, to increase, to scale, or to move upward. Can I say the Bible makes it clear that we are to grow in grace and nurture and admonition of the Lord? Can I say as a child of God, you ought to never quit growing? But somewhere along the line, in our minds, we think we've, we've come far enough. Let me ask you a question. Are you closer to God tonight than you were this time last Sunday night? Hmm? Do you know more about the Scriptures this year than you did last year? See, I've learned this in the service of the Lord. God wants to revive His church. I believe He wants revival for the church so bad if we could just get an inkling of the desire that he has for revival, we'd be revived. But I believe he's willing to dump it on us, but Miss Mary, he can't dump revival on us because we couldn't handle it. Can I say on the day of Pentecost, 
That first local church, and by the way, the church didn't start at Pentecost because they were already assembled. They were already a church. Uh, and the Lord added to the church 3,000 souls that day. Uh, 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 but on the day of Pentecost, uh, those 120 that were assembled in that upper room uh, had been there seeking God for 10 days. The comforter didn't come on the first day. They couldn't have handled it. It wasn't until they got on the same page as the Lord that the comforter could come. But can I say this? I've learned that God, Brother Charlie, He can't dump all the fullness of what He wants for your life on you at one time. So He gives you what you can handle. Then when you get that down, He elevates you. And He gives you more. And then he elevates you, gives you more. The Christian life is a process. It is an ascension to where God wants us to be. Again, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. We should have a desire to ascend not only to the will of God, but to the presence of God. And so with that in mind, I got to thinking about this thought of who will ascend. I wonder who out of this congregation tonight will embrace the things of God and begin to elevate spiritually that in weeks and months and time ahead, if the Lord allows us to have time, if you'll begin to look more like Christ and less like you. If I'll begin to look more like Christ and less like me. See, we're, we're to be transformed into His likeness. Sure. Can I say that they were first called Christians in Antioch, not because they called themselves Christians, but because their life emulated the Lord Jesus, and folks called them Christians. When we start emulating and looking and acting and speaking and walking more like Jesus, maybe, Brother Aaron, they'll want more of what we have and less of what the world has. Amen. But it starts with ascending. I got to thinking about that thought of ascending and who's going to ascend. Can I say that in this thought of ascending, first of all, folks don't ascend to the hill of the Lord because they're counterfeits. Not everybody comes to church is born again. Right. Not everybody that's on a Baptist church roll is born again. Now, I said Baptist. I didn't say some other denomination. Uh, listen, the Lord uh, 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 saved me, and the Bible made me a Baptist, and I'm a Baptist from my flat head to my flat feet, uh, and uh, I don't preach to any other denomination. I preach to Baptists. Uh, now, if I got a call from the Pope tomorrow to come preach to him, I'd go preach to him. Uh, I know a lot of Baptists say, well, you shouldn't go preach to him. Hey, I'll, I'll preach the gospel to anybody that needs to hear it. Uh, but listen, I deal with Baptists. Uh, and can I say, uh, 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 even though Baptists think they're going to heaven, there's some of them that aren't. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 that in that day many will say unto him, Did we not prophesy in your name? Uh, did we not uh, uh, do many wonderful works in your name? And they begin to listen uh, before him and he says, uh, 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 Ye that work iniquity, depart from me. I never knew you. Uh, uh, they had uh, the ideology of Christ, but they didn't have Christ. There's a difference. And can I say... I'm, I'm convinced, Brother Rod, that there are folks that have made it to the labor room and they peeked in the window, watched others be delivered, but they've never been delivered. Mm -mm. They've learned uh, all the Baptist vernacular. They've learned to say amen. They've learned how to sing the songs in the songbooks. Uh, they've learned how to shake uh, the Baptist handshake. Uh, they've learned to do all the Baptist things. And certainly they've learned to show up when we have a, a supper. You know, they know all about that. But when they're away from church, their life no different than a sinner's. They never read their Bible. They never pray and seek God's face. Uh, their language is foul. Uh, their spirit is foul. Uh, they're no more a child of God uh, uh, than the man in the moon. Uh, they may be a good Baptist, but that don't mean they're a child of God. Yeah. And they never get any closer to God because they don't know Him. Yeah. They're counterfeits. Hmm? 
Can I say some of the best actors in the world aren't in Hollywood, Brother Ray? They're in Baptist churches. Hmm? Huh? Listen, I'm not a big Billy Graham guy. Kind of preached against him a few times over the years. But Billy Graham said this. Of all the people he's seen come forward in all of his crusades, he believed only 2% were really born again. Hmm? So that tells me a lot of his ideology made people chew twofold the child of hell. They told him they were saved, but they he didn't even really believe they were saved. Hmm? But I'm here to tell you tonight, there's a lot of people that name the name of Christ that don't know him. Amen. And they never get any closer. Their life never changes. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Hey, you can have a bad day. You can step in a mud puddle. I'm not saying you'll live above sin. The Nazarene said, believe in a, a sinless perfection. I wish I could get there, but I, I hadn't mastered that. All oh, I've been saved 49 years, but I still fail the grace of God every single day. But that doesn't uh, mean I don't have a desire. There's not a stir in my heart uh, to live for God and to seek Him and want to see God do something. Uh, but I'm convinced there's a lot of folks they're Christian in name only. They're counterfeits. They never, ever have any movement of their, in their life towards Christ. They're counterfeits. And I say this, there are some in this thought of ascending who are just what I'll call circlers. They just keep going around in circles. They never have any elevation towards God they just go around in circles. Anybody ever seen a merry-go-round? You ever see that horse on them merry-go-rounds? They go up and they go down, and they go up and they go down, but they just go around. Right. And can I say that's what some of uh, folks' lives are. They're up and they're down, and they're up and they're down, and they're up and they're down, and Brother Doug, I got victory over something this week, and next week they're back down, and, every, and they just go in circles. Uh, their entire Christian life uh, is a revolving aspect of itself. Uh, it doesn't revolve around Christ. Uh, it revolves around them and their problems and all their woe is me's and all this, uh, and they never ever ascend to God's holy hill uh, because they're constantly looking at themselves instead of looking at him. They just go in circles. Go in circles. Huh? Now I know some of you used to be big NASCAR fans and never really could get into it too much because it just, it just bored me watching them go around in circles. And I know they say, Brother Ray, I've heard you tell me, you got to be there and see them cars go 200 miles an hour. Huh? And you got to see a crash every now and then, you know? Well, I mean, just vroom, 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 round in circles. I don't know. I just get bored with that. And that's why some of you are bored. You just go round and round and round in circles. Hmm? It don't matter who does the preaching. don't matter who does the singing. You get no true victory in your life because you're a circler. Hmm? You've never learned to truly give your all to Christ. There's nothing you face or nothing in your life that he can't handle. And the reason you're handling it, because you act like you give it to him, but then you bottle it all back up and take it back home with you, and you just keep going in circles and going in circles, and you never ascend. You never, ever get victory in your life, and you never, ever portray victory to a lost and dying world. I'm here to tell you, if I had what most people having their life that claim to be saved I wouldn't if I was a lost person I saw what most people claim to be saved it's wonderful being saved you ought to watch y'all self I need to put a mirror up here and so you all can see yourself sing victory in Jesus oh victory in Jesus I sing I heard an old old story uh, uh, you know what your problem is? Jericho, the walls came down when they marched around that city for seven days. On the seventh day, they marched around it seven times. The problem is, is you're in that seventh day. I'll just pick on you. You're in that seventh day, and you're on your third time around. Your feet hurt. Your back hurt. All you see is all your problems, and you quit. 
right before victory comes. Hmm? You're just a circler. Hmm? Thank God for those that press on and see the walls come down. Hmm? Uh, yeah, done made some mad. Can I say that there are some who never sin because they're nothing more than complainers? Moses had them. They got they they ticked God off so bad. God just opened up the earth and swallowed up about three thousand of them. Uh, and there's some people all they ever do is complain. Lord have mercy. Is not the joy of the Lord our strength? When you got joy, you don't complain. Yeah, I found this, Brother Phil. When you got your eyes on Jesus, you don't complain. I said it this morning. This is as close to hell as I'll ever get. I deserve to be in hell. Uh, I ought to be in hell right now. But I'm not going to hell. Uh, and because what good uh, good things God has done in my life, He saved me. Uh, he sealed me. Uh, he has sustained me. Uh, he's been good to me. Uh, hey, I should have nothing to complain about. But you let you let you let somebody we have a meal and somebody you know not get through the line before you know whatever they want to eat's gone. Complain, complain, complain. Y'all be thankful you had something to eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some are complainers. They just complain. I'm convinced there are some people that's when they're happy. Y'all remember that Andy Griffith episode where the husband and wife was fighting like cats and dogs and Andy made them be nice to each other and then they got miserable? Yeah, and then it got them back to complaining? And they was, they was happy as all get out? That's why some of y'all, you just complain. You ain't happy unless you're complaining. Can I say you dishonor God when you do that? Because sure. when you complain, you're not content. And godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? Huh? Well, God's not been as good to me as he's been to Brother Phil. God's not been as good as me as he's been. So-and-so got a new dress, and so-and-so got a new car, and so-and-so got a new... Well, if you quit complaining and start praising God, he might give you something new. Sure. Huh? I kind of got that. told you all about my friend, Brother Greg Neal. He'd be here at camp meeting. God just gave him a 737 jet for the ministry. I told him, I said, God loves you more than he loves me. <laughs> huh? Huh? The truth of the matter is, if the Lord gave us one, we couldn't put fuel in it to go anywhere, so it wouldn't do us any good. I mean, it might look good out there in the front yard. You know? <laughs> you know? Give tours of it for a dollar, you know? But there are folks that are always complain. You'll never send complaining. And can I say this, Zach? When most people are complaining, it's because they're looking around at others and not looking Amen. at you. Does not the Bible say looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith? Hmm? Huh? Hmm. I tell you what, you go some of them places Miss Annette and I have been and see people that have nothing, but they have joy and they love God. And you come and you see Americans who have everything and they're miserable. God help us. Huh? Can I say that there are some who never ascend because they get conquered? Hmm. I want to tell you something. If you're saved by the good grace of God, you've got a bullseye on your back. The devil hates you. Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy, and I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The devil wants to steal your joy. He wants to rob you of your testimony. He wants you to be miserable. And he'll do everything he can to make you that way. And can I say, if you were saved long enough, you're going to lose a battle. Now, praise the Lord. I've read the end of the book. We win the war. But you're going to have some defeats every now and then. Old Slewfoot's going to get the best of you. Huh? The problem is, Brother Brian, is when he knocks us down if we just choose to stay down. The real test of your spirituality is that you get back up and you put your faith in God 
and you get back on that path called straight yeah. and you press on. Amen. You keep on keeping on. Hmm? Uh, you know what's great about them Rocky movies? That sucker gets his face beat off in every one of them and he gets knocked down 40 times. I mean, you know it's not real. After about two knockdowns, they throw in the white fly, the towel or they, you know, the ref says, that's it, you can't take anymore. No, Rocky, he can take it. And he keeps getting back up. And he keeps getting back. Even when he's in Russia, they hated him until he kept getting back up and then the Russians are starting to cheer his name. Can I say, everybody loves somebody who just keeps getting back up. Yeah, amen. Mm. You all have heard me preach on those eagles. And at some point, an eagle will leave its rock and it'll get down on the ground and it'll start plucking out its feathers. And it don't even resemble an eagle. When other eagles see it down on the ground, it knows if it's down there, it's prime uh, candidate as prey for one of the predators. Uh, uh, a wolf or something can take it out very easily. Uh, and those other eagles begin to call to that one that's down there molting, that one that's going through that state. Uh, uh, dis uh, discouragement or that state of depression uh, and they call to it and call to it and call to it uh, to get it back to its rock uh, and I've seen people uh, 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 godly people call to them uh, uh, visit them uh, try to get them back uh, uh, in the will of the Father and back to the rock uh, uh, the rock of ages uh, and yet there are some people that just give up Sure, they become conquered I just quit. Do you know how many buildings we'd had to build if everybody would have just stayed? Yeah. Amen. I don't know why people quit. And I'm not judging those that do. I've not walked in their shoes. But I'd hope that they'd have a little fire down in their soul that when they try to quit, just like Jeremiah in chapter 20, verse number 9, he said, but there was a fire shut up in my bones and I could not stay. Amen. But there's some that just get conquered. They just won't take any more. Even though the scriptures tell us, Job tells us man's days are few and full of trouble, the Bible says that the, yea, they that live godly shall suffer persecution even though we know that our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, even though that we realize uh, God's given us a whole armor of God and we need to don that armor or else we're going to take some blows. People still, when they get hit, there are Christians that have glass jaws and they just stay down. They never ascend. They never get to where God wants them to be. They never get to that victorious place in their Christian life. Thought about this. Some don't ascend because they're campers. No offense, Brother Bob. I saw his camper last night. Lord have mercy. Brother Ray said he could live in it. I think we could. Good one. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine the fishing we could do if we had something like that? Hmm? But we couldn't fix it, you know. We'd have to take a woman along with us, Miss Nett, Miss Pam, to fry up the fish. But we could we could live in something like that, you know. Never mind. I'm not going anywhere with you. But seriously, there are some people that just become campers. They get to a place in their Christian life and they say, that's good enough. Yeah. Amen. I'm increased with goods and have need of nothing. Amen. And Jesus said that church at Laodicea, they didn't know that they were poor, wretched, blind, and naked. There's some people, they just get to a point in their Christian life and they say, I don't need to know anymore. I don't need to do anymore. I'm just happy right where I'm at. Here's the problem with that. In this way called faith, you're either going forward or you're going backwards. There is no standing still place in, in the way of faith. You're either gaining with the Lord or you're losing what you got. Amen. Hmm? 
And can I say there are some who just decide they're going to camp. This is as far as I'm going. Hmm? I don't need to know anymore, do anymore, sing anymore. Do, I'm just happy being right here. I'm glad the Lord on the way to Calvary yeah. didn't say, well, this is far enough. I'm not going any farther. Yeah. Hmm? Did not he tell us in that great sermon on the mound that if a man would compel thee to go with him a mile, go with him twain? The Lord went the second mile for us to show us as an example there is no stopping off place. Hmm? Matter of fact, if you study in the Gospels, uh, now just look up this phrase and study that he went a little farther. You know, he went to Gethsemane, and then he went a little farther, went to Calvary. Then he went a little farther, he went to the grave. Then he went a little farther, went in the lower parts of the earth. Then he went a little farther, he rose from the grave. Then he went a little farther, he ascended and went to heaven. He just kept going a little farther. You know what he didn't do? He didn't camp. Hmm? He didn't find a state of complacency. And that's what's wrong with a lot of our churches. We got good churches, we got folks that love Jesus, but we've just gotten complacent. We're just satisfied. That's a dangerous place to be where you don't want any more from the Lord, where you get satisfied. But then you have, for lack of a better term, climbers. Folks that just keep on pressing on. Mm -hmm. Now listen, you can look at me and tell that I'm not a rock climber. Have no desire. One of those things that I believe God gave us gravity for a reason and have no desire to climb up some mountain. But one thing about climbers, they face all kinds of different terrain. Can I say sometimes you're on level ground. Sometimes you're on stony ground. Sometimes you're on rocky ground. And then sometimes you're just on, you know, perpetual ground where you got peaks and valleys and canyons and all kinds of things when you're facing journeying with the Lord you know when Jesus went to Jacob's well he said I must needs go to, through Samaria and he went to Jacob's well from when he's made that statement to when he showed up it was almost 30 miles of very rough terrain you see, he didn't let the terrain stop him from what was needed to be done because he knew that woman at the well was going to be coming by and she needed to be saved and all them people in that town needed to hear that the Christ had showed up. Can I say that the terrain shouldn't determine what we're going to do for the Lord. Anytime you do something for the Lord, there's obstacles. It always is. Can I say we have one who's greater than the obstacles. We have one who can remove the obstacles or make a way through the obstacles. Can I say the Red Sea was an obstacle? Did not God make a way? Can I say Jordan was an obstacle? Get Canaan land. Did not God make a way? Can I say the fiery furnace was an obstacle? Did not God make a way? He always makes a way when we walk by faith. But can I say those climb... They climb despite the pitfalls they have in their life. Hmm? Uh, I want you to stand up if you've got your halo in your pocket and you've never, ever failed God. Anybody? That's what I thought. It's not an excuse to have a pitfall, but if you have a pitfall, pitfall we have assurances in the Word of God how to deal with that pitfall and get dusted off and go on down the road. Mm, climbers just keep climbing regardless of the pitfalls. Not only that, regardless of the plots that the devil throws in their life. Miss mm. Crystal, the devil hates you. And he'll do anything he can to trip you up. Because whether or not you realize it, you're a blessing to people. And the devil don't want you to be a blessing to people. He wants you to be bitter and nasty, and nobody wants to be around you. And so he'll do whatever he can to trip you up. And regardless of the plots the devil throws at you, you've got to keep climbing. 
Because I'm going to tell you, if you live for God long enough, there's going to be people lie on you. There's going to be people that uh, uh, deliberately try to hurt you and harm you in the, in the way called faith. I'm talking about people who call themselves Christians. Uh, there's going to be people that get cross with you. Uh, you're going to have all kinds of things, not counting uh, 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 how the devil will strive to tempt you with things that he knows that may be your weaknesses. Right. Climbers just keep climbing. Hmm? Uh, despite the pressure. Can I say, when you're trying to live for God, pressure comes on you. Mm -mm. Uh, the weight sometimes of walking with Christ gets very, very cumbersome. That's why Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, my burden's light. Huh? The Lord says, I'll carry your heavy burden, you just yoke up with me. And what happens is he carries you and your burden. Amen. Can I say climbers climb despite the peril? Sometimes you'll face some peril, some things that are dangerous, some things that are not healthy, some things that are not good for you physically. But you just keep climbing. Hmm? When he was in Grenada, there were some situations that was, you know, if the Lord wouldn't have been there, our lives could have been in jeopardy. But I got good news. The Lord was there. Huh? Can I say, despite the pain? Anybody that's been saved any length of time, somebody's hurt you. Nobody likes pain. Nobody signs up except Natalie. She loves the hospital. Uh, but we don't like pain. We don't like to hurt. <laughs> We come to church to live for God. We come to church to hear from heaven. We come to church to get some uh, strength so we can go on and do something for God. The last thing we want when we come to church is somebody like Charlie look at us cross-eyed, make us all mad, talk, talk bad about us, you know, because that's the kind of guy he is. Anybody that lived in a submarine most of his adult life, you know, he doesn't have anything good to say about people, huh? Huh? Really? How did you learn to communicate? I mean, you've been, you've been away from folks for a long time, you know, just other ugly dudes, man, for a long time, traveling under the seas, and, you know, there's nothing good under the sea. There's no sunshine. There's, I mean, it's bad. Food's bad. Air's bad. You're a messed up dude, aren't you? Huh? Now, see, he could take all that to heart, say, preacher was picking on me and get hurt. If not careful, things can get misconstrued because the devil, he, he works that way. What are you doing over here? You're not a Schneckenberger. There's room. Oh, I don't believe you. I wouldn't want to sit over there either. Huh? Uh, I just thought Kinsey's there. But the devil, he'll magnify that stuff. But Phil, somebody said, well, that Phil, he's... He's crazy. And if you're not careful, you'll start listening to that. Yeah. And that'll affect you. And you won't want to come to church and shout. You won't want to come to church and worship. You'll think, these people are thinking I'm crazy. And that'll weigh on you. And that'll weigh on you. For long, you'll get hurt. Yeah. Nobody likes the pain. But despite people talking about you, I know people you work with think you're crazy. <laughs> but despite, I know, you don't care. But despite the pain, yeah. climbers just keep climbing. Mm-mm. Sure. Every preacher I know of has had stuff about them and things, and some preachers quit. But there's some that just got a little grit in their crawl, and they just keep climbing. And by climbing, you're ascending towards God. You're drawing nigh to God, and He draws nigh to you. Every one of us ought to have a desire to get closer to God. Sure. Friend, I don't know if you've not looked around lately. When Paul said this, know also in the last days perilous times shall come. They're here. Yeah. If there's ever a time we need to get close to God, it's now. Yeah. Amen. Can I say God wants us to be close to Him. He wants to be close to us. He wants to work and he wants us to depend on him in ways 
that normally we wouldn't depend on him and he wants to work in our lives and work through our lives that others can see the goodness of God in our life now think about it now go pick on Kaylee haven't picked on her all day Kaylee when you go back to school this fall a lot of them people you go to school with they're never going to pick up a Bible they're never going to read about Jesus the only Jesus they may ever see is what you show them in your life. I know some of them are, are nut jobs and some of them are goofy, and but you've got to show them Christ. It's not easy. They're going to talk bad about you and they're not going to want to be your friend. Who cares? You've got plenty of friends around here. But you need to show them Christ. It's not always easy. But you can't show them Christ unless you're walking with him. Xander? You're going to school in a new school this year. Get a fresh start. Nobody knows how weird you are. <laughs> huh? Hey, show them Christ. Amen. Huh? Most of them rednecks down there in Dry Ridge, they don't know nothing about Jesus. Show them Christ. Just shine for Jesus. But you can't do that unless you're walking with him. Can't do that if you've camped out. You've quit. You've been conquered. You're just going in circles. So preacher, how do we ascend? Well, I've found in the God's economy, the way up is down. Amen. Getting on your knees and on your face. John the Baptist said, he must increase and I must decrease. The way up in God's economy is down. You want to get to where God is you get on your face get broken for him because he's nigh them of a broken heart and save as such of a contrite spirit yeah. and can I say uh, always the way to be elevated in God is getting lower and broken and the lower you get the bigger he gets and my dear friends for long you'll be bumping into him I wonder tonight have you just been camped out for a long time You've just been going in circles? Have you been conquered and you haven't got back up? Hmm? Maybe uh, deep down inside, you've been trying to be a Christian, but you know you're not a Christian. Hmm? Let me help you something. Being a Christian is a life changing event, it's a lifestyle. I don't get up and act like a Christian. I am one. And if you've got to constantly strive to act like a Christian, you may not be one. Hmm. Uh, I wonder tonight, has God spoke to your heart? I wonder tonight, child of God, is there a burning desire in your life to get closer to God? Is there a burning desire to, for his word to become more real in your life? For your walk to really count for him? Hmm? Listen, I really believe if the world saw more of Christ in us and less of us, we'd see a whole lot more people coming to Christ. Amen. But too many of us have just sat down. I charge you tonight, just aspire to ascend and get as close to God as you can get and again that starts by getting low are you willing to start getting closer to God if you're here tonight and you realize you're not saved I'd get saved tonight because God didn't give me that thought in this message to fall on deaf ears today's the day of salvation you don't know if God will ever speak to you again I'd get saved tonight Right. so let's all stand uh, Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart, the altar's open. I, I don't know why God would give me this message going up Jellicoe Mountain, but I was ascending. Maybe tonight you need to do some business with God. Maybe tonight God's ringing your heart's doorbell. Why don't you let him in? As they're picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the scriptures. We thank you, Lord. We can't have a close, intimate fellowship with you. God, we're thankful that, Lord, you desire to um, 
Lord, send revival to our hearts and our lives. Lord, help us to have a desire for our life to count for Christ. Help us, Lord, to desire you above all others. Now, Lord, just speak to hearts. And God, I pray especially tonight, there's somebody here tonight unsaved, lost without God. Lord, open their eyes to their need of salvation. And I pray tonight would be that night. God, speak to hearts now. Bless these in the altar and have your will and way. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.